All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah. Dear audio, please stop getting laggy. Don't we love technology? Anyway, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome back to Let Us Play. I'm your host, Spider Father Evan. Happy Halloween. I'd wear something a little uh, festive. Hey, Bad Roxy, happy Halloween to you. Uh, hope you're having a good time. Spooky tech issues. Oh, you want spooky tech issues? The internet has been misbehaving in the whole building today, and so honestly, it's a low-key miracle that I can connect because my, uh, my wired connection isn't working, but thank goodness my streaming PC has Wi-Fi as well. So that's fun. But in addition to a nice little uh, nice little, little fun treat for Halloween, I have a trick. I'm terrified. I literally don't have words. It's Kraft Mac and Cheese gummies, gummy candy. But wait, there's more. This was a gift from my parents. My mom specifically said in a text, don't think this means that we don't love you. But then they arrived. And you know you can't really see on the front? The fact that, that in the corner, it says fruit flavored. These are Kraft Mac and Cheese gummies that are fruit flavored. And it only gets worse when you get to the back of the box. It has, contains bioengineered food ingredients. I find that highly doubtful because one, there are no food ingredients in this, having looked at the ingredients list. And two, there's nothing that would be organic that could be um, bioengineered. So that's horrifying. And then there's a choking warning. Do not give to children under four. Children must be seated and supervised while eating. So... Um, Let's try this. Yes, Father Peter Parker. It's uh, It was a deleted scene in the latest uh, uh, Into the Spider-Verse movie. It's a shame, but, you know. Also good to see a Shano Vision. Those don't smell like any particular fruit. They smell like just the concept of fruit. I, we'll find out. They're so orange. Like, that is the color they are. That's not like a trick of the light. They are just neon orange. The things I do for Twitch chat. Oh... It's like citric banana. Like they said they're fruit flavored. They never specified what kind of fruit. So I guess that's on me. Okay, I can't. Um, this texture is horrifying because it. It's not smooth. It's not like a piece of macaroni, although it is kind of squishy and the same size. Yeah, it's fruit flavored with heavy air quotes on everything. Um, but it's got like a rough texture to it, and it makes me think of the cheese powder, honestly. But all right. Well, I'm appreciating that they aren't cheese flavored. Insert Ian Malcolm quote about scientists here. Yeah. You know, somehow that's not worse than um, the uh, funnel cake candy corn. The funnel cake candy corn is still the worst thing I've eaten this month. But it's, it is so perfectly generic fruit flavor that you're not sure if 
it's a banana or an apple or a strawberry or a lemon. It's just like it's it is the concept of fruit, which is a horrifying thing that they've managed to distill. Which I feel is appropriate for Halloween. Well, I'm going to be giving that to my coworkers at the next staff meeting. Got to share the love. But uh, let's go ahead. Let's dive in to more technical issues. Uh, I love technology. I don't I still don't know why that works every time, but it does. So hey, we're playing Banjo Kazooie. This is a classic N64 game. Look at this controller. It's an honest to goodness N64 controller. And only one of the buttons isn't working for some reason. But that's okay, it's not a button we really need. And I tried to get it working. I literally dismantled this and cleaned the pads th today. Oh, the lingering aftertaste of those gummies. It's... Ding pot, ding pot, by the bench. Who is the nicest looking wench? Why, it's Grunty any day. She really takes my breath away. I love how much this game rhymes. Yes, you're right, I'm rather proud. My looks stand me out from this crowd. Err, uh, but there is this girl. What do you mean this cannot be? There is no one prettier than me. Why, it's Tooty, young and small. She's the prettiest girl of all. No, 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 you must be mad. Nicer beauty can't be had. Unfortunately, I think you'll find... It's Tootie. She's cute and kind. So the stuttering is, I think, because of the emulation I'm doing. Shh, don't, t don't tell Uncle Nintendo I'm doing emulation. My N64 is in my parents' basement, which is about 2,000 miles away, so... But I have the controller. That's the important part. Hi there, Tootie! What are you going to do today? When my big lazy brother wakes up, we're going on a an adventure! Great soundtrack, composed by Grant Kirkhope. Wake up! I want to go on an adventure too! If Tootie thinks she's fairer than me, I'll steal her looks, and ugly she'll be. Is that your brother? Where? Mr. Mole? I can't see him. Up there in the sky. Yes, because that's where he'd be. I don't think so. Who is that? Maybe it's the witch who lives in a castle shaped like her own face? Let me kill you, ugly old hag! Don't scratch and bite, my little bear! You'll soon need bigger underwear! That's a sentence. Oh no, she's got her! Somebody help! Banjo, wake up now! <sighs> what do you want me for, Kazooie? Let's get outside! There's trouble! <laughs> this game has so much character, I love it. Woo. 
Listen up, I'm Bottles, the short-sighted mole. I'm Banjo, and this here's my buddy, Kazooie. Sure is a strange looking buddy, Banjo. Can it talk? Better than you can, Goggle Boy. What? What was all that noise about? Where's my sister, Judy? The ugly witch Gruntilda swooped down out of the sky and grabbed her. So you didn't know who the witch was flying around, but you got her name in the fight. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, Bottles. Get her back. Where do we go? She flew up to her mountain lair. It's really dangerous, so you'll probably need some training before you go up there. Ah, uh, character limits. Press A if you want me to teach you some basic moves. Or press B if you think you're already got good enough. You bet we're good enough, bottle brain. I, I know the basics of this game. Meet me at the top of Spiral Mountain. Attack the giant carrot! So, as you might imagine, everything is bear-themed. We get six extra honeycombs, we get an extra hit point. I guess I don't have that move yet. I may have to look into that stutter, see if there's something I can do to fix it for next week, but too late now. Has anyone got fun Halloween plans? exciting vigil mass. There you go. That's a good one. Okay, I think that's all the honeycomb pieces there in Spiral Mountain. Never mind, there's another one. Love the audio change when you go underwater. Sticky, tasty, honey energy. Basically, everything in this game has eyes and talks. to enter Gruntilda's lair. Look out for me inside. Good luck. That's all you have to say? Okay, thanks. That, that kind of felt like a goodbye and good luck. Keep warm and well fed. This fine contraption, so I'm told, will make me young and tooty old. 
Let me go, you fat hag. My brother will come and kick your butt. Rescue you, he will not dare. There's many dangers in my lair. Hurry, Klungo, push that switch. I'm tired of being an ugly witch. Yes, Mistress Scrunty Power is on. Banjo, help! It's okay, this process takes a very long time, so she'll be safe. There he is, the fun begins. My tricks and traps will see who wins. Yeah, I just love, I love that throughout the game, uh, Grunty will just give you, just give you crap. She'll just like, start talking and be like, ah, you, you're not, you're never gonna do it. So we need to get all the, these puzzle pieces called jiggies because why not? This is a uh, late 90s, early, yeah, late 90s collectathon. It has. So you need to collect the picture with the j jiggies to uh, enter their worlds. But each world will have 10 jiggies. Uh, one of which is obtained by collecting five Jinjos, which are little creatures, and 100 notes, um, which you need to get the moves. And then there's always an extra one just outside the world. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Oh, there's Jinjo. I'm a note, one of 100 in each world. Yeah, you need the notes to open up doors to get further in. So you really do have to collect everything in this game. But for a collect-a-thon of this era, I actually think it's one of the better ones, for sure. I think it's aged really well, for one. Um, but it's also got kind of a nice balance of, like, each thing has a purpose. I feel like Donkey Kong 64 just has too many things to collect. And the worlds are nice sizes. They feel like little vignettes more than like a full-size world. Ow. Excuse me, I would like... I'd... There we go. Now, the obnoxious thing about the notes in this game is if you don't collect them all in one go, you have to restart from scratch to get a... and work your way up in order to get a new high score. Bottles, teach me something. Probably ground pound. I call this the Beak Buster. Jump into the air, then press Z to send Kazooie slamming hard down onto the floor. Gulp. I don't like the sound of that, Banjo. Get used to it, Nest Girl. You'll be using it a lot. Yeah. Kazooie suffers a lot. She just suffers a lot. <laughs> but she's, she does fine. Hey, Mumbo to Okay. Ah, uh, you know, Mumbo, your... Your your language is maybe one thing that hasn't aged well in this game. Because Mumbo talks... In kind of a stereotypical fashion of, like, a shaman or something. 
But he's useful because he helps transform you. Much fun for Mumbo. <laughs> That's fair. Extra life. I love the voices all the little things have. leaving these jiggies all over the place. This game is easy, he says on the first level. The Talon Trot will let Kazooie tackle steep slopes with ease. That sounds useful. How does she use it? Hold Z, then press the left C button to continue to hold the Z while moving around. And control Kazooie with this control stick single most used thing in the game because it gets you up steep slopes and also uh, it's just faster than Banjo's walking speed. Oh, camera, camera please. Okay, so we need to go learn how to use the eggs somewhere. You may have noticed the uh, soundtrack is also kind of ambient, in that, like, when we were up by the termites' nest, you could hear the termites going, Hop, two, three, four. Which, for the time, I feel was pretty impressive, technologically speaking, but just, again, adds a lot of character. What are we doing now? We are playing Banjo-Kazooie, and you missed that terrible atrocity that is the mac and cheese gummy that is actually fruit-flavored. I have not updated that to include these gummies, but I feel like there should be a sufficient amount of gummy, uh, a sufficient amount of bits to eat a gummy along with the candy corn. You know, honestly, it kind of depends on the flavor, because there are some flavors of the candy corn which were fine. Not most of them, mind you. Um, it's really all together when they get the worst, except for funnel cake. That one's just always bad. But the gummy's just weird because it doesn't know what kind of flavor it wants to be. It's just generic fruit flavor. They're also bright orange. Like, that is just the color they are. Um, I guess we'll go over by the big monkey. Uh, yes, it, it was released on the N64 originally, and then had an Xbox release later because Microsoft bought Rare. Um, I am playing it with an N64 controller, and I'm I am playing it on uh, a vague approximation of an N64. One might say, for legal reasons. Because I left my my N64 is in my parents' basement, two thousand miles away. 
and I also don't have uh, the switch. Um, chimpy hungry. Chimpy want orange now. Be chimpy. Okay. One moment. There's a bit of a head cold going around the house. Hey, that's Conga's orange. Put it back. Yum, oranges are nice. Alright, have fun, Roxy. Good to see ya. Help Fat Bear and Bird. Alright, Bottles, teach me how to egg. Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. Why is a mole teaching this? I'm listening, Beetle Breath. Hold Z, then press the top C button to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Hey, sounds cool. Anything else? Sure, press the bottom C button instead, and you can shoot them out from behind. Sheesh, sounds painful. I wish I'd never asked. Bird Brain can carry 100 eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use the control stick to aim w while you're crouching. Egg sighting, huh? Uh, now that you've learned that, here, here's 50 eggs. Your energy's a little low. I'll fill it up for you. Thank you. Whoa, Banjo. There's nothing more I can teach you on this world. Six hundred bits from step zero for all the candy corn and a fruit gummy mac and cheese. I think it's gotta be more than six hundred. Like if all of the candy corn together is five hundred, I think throwing in a fruit gummy is probably an extra three hundred on top of that. So you got you got two hundred more. Cause I can see that tasting extra terrible together. And if I'm gonna suffer, I'm gonna at least earn some money from it. Aiming eggs is so hard. I I literally can hit you. I am hitting you. Did I glitch him out? I think I might have glitched him out. Step zero with an extra 200 bits. I wonder what that could be for. Gar, eggs hurt Conga. Let me defeat this monkey. Or bear beat Conga. Me give price to bear. Actually, I think the bird beat you, but okay. Well, I brought this on myself. Wait, we beat you. Leave me alone. The bear did it. The bird is an accessory to assault. It's hard to argue with that logic. You know, this is an accessory to assault. Your bits. I have to remind myself of these flavors. It's been a while. Okay, snow cone, kettle corn, cotton candy, lemonade, that thing, the worst offender. And you know what? Just for you, Step Zero, I am going to throw in the one normal piece of candy corn I found in that bag as well. And then last but not least, I mean, look at this thing. It looks... It looks just like a piece of mac and cheese. Boots gummy. Uh, 
also worried this candy corn's gone stale. Oh, that was a mistake. As if the combination of flavors wasn't bad enough, the combination of textures is even worse. I think there might be. Or there might just have to be a ban. Oh. Who woke up in the morning and thought, you know what the world needs? Mac and cheese gummies that taste like fruit instead. Me mumbo, best shaman in all game. Also, only shaman in game. Mumbo's magic tokens hit by which? Find tokens and mumbo help you. Banjo not got enough tokens for mumbo magic. Look at sign, bring me more. Surely my, my taste buds and dignity have a price. That's a horrifying way to phrase- Oh! Oh! Oh. It's got like... Fruity aftertaste with deep fried flavor. Oh, I hate everything about that. Oh. I may not be able to do that again. I am curious how these gummies will kind of go stale. Well, you're satisfied. Well, that's good. This is why I do this. Just to satisfy you, Step Zero. Bum, bum, bum. Bum. Okay, so we need to find one more mumbo token, which might be in the here. Yep, there it is. Hey, ugly, no bears allowed in Ticker's Tower. Okay, now we have enough tokens. So now we can go become a termite. And I think that's where the last of all the uh, notes and jiggies are. Well, J there's the one outside the world. But... Banjo is living his best low poly life. He's just chilling. Let's see some mumbo magic. Mumbo's magic free to change back. You come when ready. So all of Mumbo's transformation abilities um, they, they don't have an attack. So that's kind of the trade-off, but they usually have better mobility in some way. But there's a very funny ref, very funny little Easter egg. Hey, where did you get those shorts? I want them. Um, there's a very rare chance, pun intended, because the game developer is rare, that when you transform, you turn into a washing machine instead. And Mumbo apologizes and turns into whatever he's supposed to. And in the sequel, Banjo Tui, they made that one of the actual transformations. Hey, we got all the notes. But yeah, the termite can stick to very steep surfaces. Even the talon trot would not uh, stick to this. 
Although I'm sure there is a speed run low percent that skips the transformation and comes up here anyway through some glitch. Because that's how speed runs be. Termite could fall from great heights. I don't know why I thought that, but. Oh, I never got that, Chicky. Oh, no. Ah. We have to go transform, get that Jiggy, which is from the Jinjos, and then retransform because we need to be the Termite to get the, the Jiggy outside the world. So a lot of the, the sounds that um, various characters make, especially Mumbo, is literally just like nonsense that Grant Kirkhope, the composer, just kind of spouted out one day in the booth and they just kind of remixed it and reversed some of it and distorted it. Okay, that means we've collected everything in this world. So uh, we are never coming back to Mumbo's Mountain. There are no listed lowest percents for this game. Penny percent, 100%. Huh, that's interesting. Grunty's magic stops you from taking the notes off the world, but the 100 you just collected counts as your best note score. Try to get 100 on each world. Okay, I already did. Mumbo magic get weak. Animal turn back or magic go. So this is the game mechanic where that they explain. So why you can't just show up as the termite in, you know, the final battle. Hello, bottles. This is a note door sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful musical spells. Open it up then, jam jars. It's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the music. Musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? The number on the door is the strength of the spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the worlds must be at least this to break Grunty's spell. When you open a world door, baddies escape and roam once more. Hmm, your energy is a little low. I'll fill it up for you. Any percent is 59 minutes? Ooh. Dang. Sorry about that. Someone in the house started a head cold. Wake up, pot. 
You've activated a magic cauldron. Find two of the same color to create a shortcut. When I was a kid, I had a, um, a walkthrough guide that had a very nice map of showing where all those were and where they connected. Oh, on the Xbox, it's 36 minutes, 39 seconds? Dang. I wonder what makes it so different on the two platforms. Treasure Trove Cove. One of the difficulties with the N64 controller is that when you're trying to go a particular direction, it's built... there's like an octagon built into it. Um, and so actually, actually controlling a direction in between two corners is obnoxious. But I love playing with the right controller for some authenticity. So this is actually one of the last levels of the game. And this is some game design I, I like. Uh, that I don't remember, honestly. The fact that it teases you with the later levels like that. Oh, hello there, young ones. I'm Brintilda, Brintilda's nicer sister. I've crept down here to help you defeat the old hag. It's about time she was taught a lesson. I know all of Grundy's disgusting secrets, and I'll tell you three of them every time you find me. Remember them well, young ones, as they will help you avoid a fiery fate. Press B if you'd like to hear them. It was called Cauldron Butt. I also know that sweaty gorilla feet is her favorite smell. Monster chase you, they're a hounding, then you'll get grunt grunty pounding. This is also very much written in kind of 90s gross out humor. Uh, you don't have to. Um... So there is a there's a quiz you have to take as the final level before the actual final boss. Uh, but there's ways around it. So you don't have to actually bother with those. Notes stay collected in the 360 version. Nice. Ahoy there, this be Treasure Trove Cove. There be two new moves for ye to find. And a shark to terrify your night you and your nightmares. Yeah, if you go out into the open waters, smiling friend there appears and He's there to ruin your day. Ahoy there, I be Blubber's treasure. Hey, who's Blubber? I'm a red feather, and I help Kazooie fly when she, she knows how. You'd think a bird would already know that. 
This is your big chance, chicken legs. It's time for you to fly. At last, it better be easy, bog eyes. Simple enough even for you, bird brain. Just stand on a flight disc and press A. Here's 25 red feathers to help you into the air. See you. Did Balls just say be seeing you? Aye, that'd be half of me gold. Now, not every world has a Mumbo transformation. So this one has Mumbo tokens for future worlds, but there is no Mumbo place to transform here. I'm not going to touch anything this time. <laughs> me treasure, thank ye, me hearties, take this reward. I'm off to spend this gold. Well, easy come, easy go, I guess. Yes, I would like to talk to you about the jump pad disc. Thank you. You'll reach new heights with my new shock spring. Does Kazooie do it? My legs are tired. Don't worry, the turkey does all the work. Simply stand on a shock jump disc and then press A. Nice going, you've learned all the cove's new moves. I, I, I'm I trying to decipher your message, Gale, and I'm having a hard time. I recognize the first one is the Lurgoat, also known as, uh, you know, well, you know. Me leaky, no good for water. Can bear block hole with pebble? I don't know, we'll find out. I have to use the enter key as my uh, down C because this does not want to register my down C despite the fact that it appears in config and everything. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Banjo, hang on to the ledge or something. Can't you do that? Hey. 
There we go. Leave no note left behind. Hmm. The game is called Banjo-Kazooie, and Banjo-Kazooie is written on the wall. And there's all these letters. I bet we have to spell fish. I mean, yes. Ah! Your statement about fish in Greek is accurate. I mean, it's Icthyus. But it's unhelpful. It's kind of like, I don't know why I thought I could wall jump there for a moment. That would be like saying humanity in Ethiopian starts with egg. Oh, at Last Crusade reference? I haven't seen Last Crusade in so long. Skrillage. Yeah, this game is awesome. I love it so much. Well, yes, and in Hebrew, Yeshua would start basically with an S. My favorite Greek name, though, of of a Hebrew transliteration is Moses because it's written Moses. Like it's very specifically uh, Mu uh, uh, Omega um, Upsilon, but the the Omega has ah I'm trying to jump off the corner. The Omega has a uh, umlaut meaning it's not a diphthong. So it's Mawuzas, not Mausas. Uh, I am, in fact, I'm playing on an original N64 controller, uh, and I'm playing on some wonderful software that vaguely approximates an N64, which is all I will say for legal reasons. I, I'd like to play it on native hardware, but... My parents' basement, which has my N64. It's a bit of, bit of a distance away. Thought an umlaut meant it was a heavy metal band. No, the Greeks didn't have heavy metal. Contrary to popular belief, they were really more of a jazz group. Uh, I do think there's actually some good, interesting moral discussion around emulation. I ultimately do think that it's morally okay. It's, um... If, particularly when something is abandonware or unavailable in some fashion, or if you have actual hardware, but just the inability to access it for some reason. And I think for the sake of archiving, as we've 
seen uh, repeatedly, including times that games have stolen provided their own pirated versions, which I find funny. Um, things like emulation are good for archives, archival of games. Now you perceive if all games are at risk of being lost without any emulation? Yeah. Like, there is a museum that specializes in preservation of media, particularly gaming. Um, but, you know. And these are, you know, you can say, oh, it's just video games. It's like, well, no, it's stories. It's like, imagine if the works of Shakespeare could only be preserved by some form of emulation. Yippee, Snacker gets dessert, too. No, no, no dessert for you. Nope, nope, nope. We will be taking ourselves and going another direction. And then, of course, with emulation, there's discussion of what is the legality versus what is the morality of it. Because as Aquinas said, any unjust law is not a real law at all. Shark's not triggering over on this side? Ah, oh, there he goes. Cheese and crackers. Just wait there. Yeah, I'm... I would not be surprised if uh, the Catechism quotes that bit of... Aquinas, it's a great line. There's, a, I mean, Aquinas has a lot of great lines. He also has a lot of lines where it's like, okay, I'm gonna need like three months to decipher what this sentence means. Um, but that's funny that Gilbert's all that people would just like sit there and copy plays by hand while it's happening. That's that's actually an impressive skill. the idea of like knockoff like getting a play from wish.com I'm coming Jinjo friend 70s disco version of Pirates of Penzance? I'd see that. Ow. I legitimately thought for a moment that Banjo and Kazooie could do the Mario long jump thing. I've been playing a lot of Mario Wonder lately. That's my excuse.
Ah, okay, it only has eggs. How is Mario Wonder? Uh, it is really good. I think it is the best 2D Mario and a bit of a revolutionary form of a 2D Mario since New Super Mario Bros. It has a ton of character. Um, it feels great. The levels are, like, perfectly bite-sized. It's got some good challenge to it. This be Gruntilda's booty. Touch it if you dare. He touched the butt. Rop. Sorry, I'm gonna have to pause here to read your questions, Squirrelage. Uh, if you may ask questions, since it's all Saints Eve. When it comes to media consumption that involves magic or the occult, as many games do, are you aware of any general Catholic take on that? Obviously, you do games where magic systems exist, so surely there's some leeway in this area, but just curious how some Christians are very up in arms, and then some don't care. Yeah, you know, I think that's actually a really good question. Um, and I get the idea of, like, you know, what we believe about magic and, and the occult and demons, but... It, I feel like something that is a work of fiction is a very important distinction. Um, fiction is a space where we can kind of explore things and ideas more safely that are more perhaps metaphorical or allegorical. I mean, look at the great example of C.S. Lewis and, um, you know, the, the series of Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. There is magic in there. There is good magic and there's bad magic. Um, and it's, But it's all used to advance an allegory uh, and understanding. I mean, uh, you know, The Lord of the Rings, a great tale about the loss of innocence in war, uh, as it was a reflection of J.R.R. Tolkien's time serving with his close friends in the, the First World War, but still, you know, with very heavy Christian Catholic themes. There's magic in there. And I don't... I, I think that's totally fine. Um, you know, and I think that's kind of the separation. You kind of have to be able to say, there is a line between me and um, this me form of media because it is fiction. Now, if you're starting to think, for whatever reason, you know, that you're really a student of Hogwarts, well, you should probably be seeking some form of professional help at that point, both sort of spiritual and psychological. Um, do, no, I do think there can be bad examples, too. You know, there are certainly forms of fiction that kind of take it too far uh, and kind of revel in some of it. But just because something has magic or cult or something like that, I don't think that we as Catholic Christians have to say we can never consume this media. Uh, I think we, we can approach it quite critically, but also say, you know, what's the good? You know, again, you know, what are the stories... What are the allegories? How is this helping advance a self-understanding of the author and of the reader um, in their own life? So, you know, I think I think fictional magic can be a great vehicle for that. So, yeah, that that's kind of my my two cents. I hope that helps. Okay, now how do I get back out of here? Is there a flight pad in here? Nope. I was hoping the game developers would be nice and give me a flight pad. Ha 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 
Okay, let's go up this tower real quick, and then I think we just need to fly on over to the other side of that area. Rotada. Well, today's gospel is very short. I think it's all of like eight lines. Uh, it's I'm pretty sure it's just two, maybe three sentences, uh, which I find always kind of fascinating grammatically when that happens. But anyway, um, follow the clues if you're looking for gold. Um, anyway, uh, Christ is saying, what can I compare the the kingdom of God to? Um, and there were sort of two messages I actually wanted to go with, but you can only do so much in a daily homily. So I went with, um, you know, we sometimes want to be at the end of the growing. We want to be the great mustard tree. We want to be the dough that's all leavened. Um, and uh, uh, it takes some, prop some, prep some uh, transformation. St. Paul talks about that of, you know, the, in the first reading, actually, of the whole of creation is groaning in labor pains. You know, the kinds of transformation that God invites us to bring about great things, but are also taking time and sometimes difficult. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was there's a sense of, like, Christ is almost saying, like, what can I compare the kingdom of God to? How can I possibly put it into words? How great it is. And yeah, kids dressing up, I think, is not going to affect souls terribly. And yeah, there are absolutely certain works of fiction that take it too far, and you know, that can that can happen um, in lots of different medium. Um, an example of a game that took the occult too far. Uh, nothing that comes to my mind immediately when it comes to a game. I think one form of media that did, but it was intentionally doing this, is uh, his Dark Materials trilogy. Like, that's very intentionally written by an atheist, um, sort of as an anti- religious book, so. Um. Let me think. Other books, uh, games have taken it too far. I'm sure there are some, but, I mean, there's so many games, it's, it's impossible to know. It really is just like a matter of conscience, and... Yep, that's... Yeah, that's actually a good example. Thank you, Kit. Um, there's a book in D&D, &D, like literally both in the game and also there was a physical edition called The Book of Vile Darkness. Um, and yeah, I know some parents who are like, yeah, that's taking it a bit too far. Sort of the counter. The opposite one is the uh, Book of Exalted Deeds. Which let you play like an angel. Give us the gold! And I think ultimately it just kind of has to come up to your own conscience, as you know, we're very much called to form those. And kind of being able to know and trust and, and look at something and say, hmm, you know, this one, I'm not going to finish. I'm going to put it down and have to walk away.
Yeah, you're most welcome. Glad to have a, a good discussion like that. That was a great question. Oh, did I already get the thing up here? I guess I already got the thing up here. Yeah, I can think of going coastal, but that's, you know, it's not a cult, it's just that game was trying to be way too edgy. I do think moral choice systems in RPGs can be really interesting, though. Uh, the game, one of the uh, RPG games that I have lined up, it'll be the game after the game after Yeez, uh, is KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic. It was one of the first major games to have a moral choice system. Not the first, but really one that popularized it. And it helps that it's, you know, Jedi. Activate that grunty switch. There be the cannon. I'm going to presume you're talking about KOTOR there, Gail, because otherwise I don't know what you're referencing. Super early spoilers for KOTOR. Okay, duly noted. Yeah, I've never actually played it. Um, I have played the sequel. Because it was on sale, I was like, well, I intend to play the first one on stream, but I guess I can play this one on my own. All five Jinjo get. Okay, so now what we're looking for... There's a few notes left, and I know where they are, but I don't know where that where is. Because we're looking for a giant shell. I think it's... It's just over this way. There it is. Hey, this Nipper's Beach. You find nothing without Nipper's help. Help us, then you crustacean brain. Grr, cheeky bird need feathers clipping. Oh yeah? Just try it, shellhead. Yeah, it turns out Kazooie uh, is quite sassy. And poor Banjo just often winds up in the middle of like, I'm trying to just be the peacemaker. I just want the jiggy. Hmm. 
me. All right, all the notes. So is that the tenth one? I was not paying attention. Yes. Okay. We haven't found any of the uh, honeycombs, but you know what? We have all the notes. We have all the jiggies. Let's shimmy and shake. No, thank you. No, thank you, crab. I no, I'm good. If I had timed this better for Halloween, we could have been in the haunted house level, but oh well. to check that article out myself. And that's not where I wanted to go. Yeah, Grant Kirkhope really knocked the music out of the park in this game. the way to the level I need to get to the painting. Well, this is one of the most obnoxious paintings to get to because it's on a timer. Sometimes the random stuttering is not helping. <laughs> a big boy article. That's a that's a good way to put it. Oh, it's not on a timer. I thought it was. Maybe I'm thinking of. A... There were so many of the early 3D platformers that had a space like that. Where it's like, oh, too too light. Two pipes or something that stands up that you've gotta jump across. Yeah, no, the stuttering is not your connection. Um, it's it's the close but not technically quite uh, equipment and, and software. Wait. Eh, we've got enough. This is actually level four. What? Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a look at into the uh the stuttering. See if I can solve it. My bigger priority was getting the controller working, because at first, even the D-pad wasn't working, or the controller stick wasn't working, and I got all of it except for the down C button working. 
I'm like, no, I'm afraid that this is my costume party. I'm actually doing laundry tonight. That's my grand plan. Long of tooth and strong of arm. Grunty's got the lasting charm. Yep, I dressed up. Father Peter Parker, just for y'all. I worked at my staff meeting today. Uh, and it was on Zoom, so as everyone logged in, they were like, Oh, hi, I hope everyone had a good weekend. Whoa, Father Evan, what are you wearing? You've activated a magic cauldron. Is Clanker's Cavern up this way? It's been so long since I played this game, I actually don't remember. Every day is dressed up when you're a priest. I would like to think that uh, clerical garb is a little more than just dress up, but there are days it feels like it. Maybe, uh... I could have sworn Clanker's Cavern was level 3. Can someone look it up really quick? It's a uniform, it doesn't count. That's harsh. Hello, Brentilda, who is swiftly forgotten in the rest of the games. If you think I'm rather soft, I'll be waiting in the loft. <laughs> it just happens that priests are real, too. <laughs> Uh, I could add a bow tie, it would just look really awkward. Because it would just kind of be, like, wrapped around, because you can't really, like, get, like, into this. Okay, but that doesn't tell me... I don't want to know where it is, I just want to know, is it level 3 or 4? <laughs> Yummy! Crocked is like! I just legitimately don't remember. I guess it is level 3, just based on the jiggies, because it's 5 and this one was 8, or 7, or something. Okay. Wait back in there and find that new move you just missed, if you want to beat Grunty. I like that when you open up a world, uh, monsters appear. It's a nice little touch. It appears to be level 3, that's what I thought. That's why I was, I was so confused, it's like... I, the, the pipe right there is all, you know, Thinker's Cavern-esque. Aha, there we go. That's where it is. Okay, I knew I thought it was up there. I mean, the downside of this game is that they did such a good job with the set dressing that sometimes you don't know if it's a level entrance or if it's just there. We are not going to finish Clanker's Cavern. 
That's for darn sure, because that level's... Gregor's Cavern is a tough level. It's a really fun one, but... It's really... I think it's a really interesting design space. Because it's basically... There's this giant mechanical fish. And you have to raise it, and then there's a bunch you can do inside of him. So it's a, a very small level, but very impressively compact. And it uses these nerds. Jump scare of my childhood. Lucky you, I'm an invulnerability feather. Bottles will tell you more. And then in the sequel game, they introduced Minjos instead of Jinjos. They're the evil ones. Well, I'm not going to bother with notes, I guess. Cause I'm, well, maybe I should, just in case. You know, we're not going to 100% this game. I am Clanker, which is garbage grinder. Clanker not like dirty water. Want fresh air? Look at that. Even garbage disposals have feelings. Twitch chat, have you said thank you to your garbage disposal today? But not rational souls, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, if there's a talking bird and bear, I'm probably just going to not try and guess the metaphysics of this world. No, come back here, 2D image. You hate your garbage disposal and you punished it accordingly. Wow. Harsh. Possibly fair. I don't know. Oh, due to it being plumbed incorrectly. Oh, okay, yep, I did misread that. What up, Green Jinjo? What up, little dude? No, I picked... I said, what up, little dude? Is fresh air, but what about us? Oh, I don't think we're gonna make it. Well, Banjo and Kazooie have seen better days. Wow, your best note score for this world? I don't know, what was it, like seven? Thank <laughs> you. 
Rude. You're gonna lurk while you work? All right. Work away. Oh no, we didn't get the jin the jiggy, so he's not up. The jiggy's not up. Because basically everything resets in the level except for his height once you get that jiggy. You're getting jiggy with work lurking. Look, it's a trap. Hey, Step Zero. I had a question for you. You have a Steam Deck, right? How's the battery life on it? I was talking to someone about theirs and they really like it. I was just kind of curious, like, what it's like. shiny in here. Snippet mutants are we. Jigsaw's ours. Fights us for it. Apparently it's glowing in here because of radium. Three to five hours. Yours is the prize. That's not bad. Basically for a portable PC. I don't think anything will ever replace your Vita, unless you just go totally retrograde and get a PSP. Gale. Remember, Vita means life. Yeah, it's just, this is technically true, but unhelpful.
All right, let's try to free clank her again. This time, let's find the bubble fish earlier and just follow it. Bubblefish. This may not end well. Ah, oh, because sometimes steering this is not great. And you can't really tell where the bubble is because they're a 2D object in a 3D plane. Yeah, I know the one new move. It's inside Clanker, but I'm having a problem raising Clanker and surviving. have to concentrate. Think like the fish. Be the fish. One more. Shot that one, but we should be okay. The problem is the fish keeps moving during the cutscene. have to get the chicky. 
Excuse me. We did it. It only took three tries. Blanker's teeth hurt now. Eat too much garbage. Help, Clanker. You look like you're kind of asking a lot of us. We've only really known each other for a little bit. Ah, I think I was fatty kidneys. I thought I could... I thought I could make it back up there after that actually pretty nice save. Oh well. You can't double jump out of that. Because if you're walking as Kazooie, she can't flap. Overshot. Yeah, now I'm stuck. There we go. I know you said your teeth are dirty, but uh, I just need to keep exploring the area. You just passed your best note score. I'm sure I did. This is great. The uh oh. figured that out another time. That sounds like future father having problems. Yeah, 
in through the blowhole. I like that. I, I like the creativity of the fact that you can enter through the blowhole, through the mouth when you shoot the teeth out, and uh, through the gills. I'm either very brave or just very ignorant as a, as a bear. No, thank you, Mr. Tentacle. I am good. Bottles teach me a new move. This move uses Pico's wings as a shield against the bad guys. Cool. Does it make me invulnerable? Sure does. Hold Z and press right C button. Keep C held to use the control stick to move around. Use it wisely with those as this move requires gold feathers, and you can only carry ten of them. Here, take these five valuable gold feathers with you. Hmm. Your energy is a little low. I'll fill it up for you. You've learned all my moves for this world. doing the rings challenge. You gotta jump through the rings in order in order to get the jiggy. is just kind of a collection of things. It's a it's a bear and a fictional kind of bird that collects jigsaw pieces and notes. Why? It's a bear and a bird who collects jigsaw pieces and notes. very difficult. I'm also just bad at it. This side gone. Clanker swallowed reward? Gee, I wonder what a gold tooth could turn into in this world. Got that side much easier. dentist now. Ooh. I mean, I'm not a fan of... Actually, my dentist here is pretty nice. It's actually really nice, and she does amazing work. I still don't love the dentist. But I can imagine robot dentist. Hmm. 
Do they get robot Novocaine? directly to the pain circuit. I feel like robots would like that, though. What do I know? I'm no robotologist. Jinjo down there. Not getting all of you today, my friends. Sorry. Okay, 51 notes is a respectable amount. And I think that's actually a good place to call it for the day. So let's see the most brutal save and quit screen there is in gaming history. Banjo's game ends in my tower. Turn it up, I need full power. Yes, your grunty ship. Transformation soon be complete. Help me, Banjo, I feel all funny. Bear and bird. Finished Grunty wins. Look at Grunty. She's a beauty. I'm much prettier than Tooty. Oh, you are, mistress. Oh, yeah. Grunty's the reason that Mumbo Jumbo has a skull for a face. They used to date, and that was her punishment when he broke up with her. Banjo, your sister wants a word with you. Now. So yeah, you get the game over screen when you save and quit. Which is just like... I don't know if it's brilliant psychology or terrible psychology to try and get you to play more. But thank you so much to everyone for tuning in to Let Us Play. I've been your host, Father Evan, or I suppose... Father Peter Parker, Father Spider-Man, you must finish in a single stream. No. No, I must not. I I have other duties in life to attend to. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope everyone had a good time. Hope everyone has a great and happy Halloween. Uh, uh, join us again on Thursday for more Skyrim for spirituality. Um, uh, what should I call it? Spirituality Thursday. Uh, next Monday, there will not be a stream. I'll be on the road as I'm headed back from Doxicon. So look forward to that. Should be a lot of fun to share with you. Um, and then uh, next Tuesday, we'll be back with more Banjo and Kazooie. So thanks so much for tuning in. Glad you all enjoyed it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and God bless.